Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today we're going to look at this device here. It's called the Super Console X Cube. Now this is the latest in a line of preloaded retro gaming consoles. And these are essentially plug and play. You just plug them right into your TV and have access to thousands of retro games. There's a couple things that make this device unique. It has a slightly upgraded chipset, as well as easy access to four USB ports here in the front. So let's take a hard look at this device in the context of all the others that are available in this range, and we'll see whether or not this one's worth considering. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. So to start, let's talk about the specs. Like I mentioned before, this has a slightly upgraded chipset. It uses an S905M TAC-B chipset. And on paper, this looks like it has the same specs as any other S905X chipset like the original Super Console X or the Super Console X Pro. But as you'll see later on in this video, the performance is actually a little bit better than I was expecting. Now across the board, all the other specs are basically the same as the other Super Console X devices. Unfortunately, it has only a gig of RAM and it runs Emulec 3.9. It also has an Android side, but it's really not worth considering. And finally, in addition to the USB ports that you saw on the front, there's also an ethernet jack in the back and it has built-in Wi-Fi too. Now in terms of price, you can get one for as low as $46, but it comes with really crappy controllers. The $52 one is probably gonna be your best bet. It's a 64 gigabyte version, but you can upgrade all the way to the 256 version for about $77. Now a quick unboxing here. I actually got sent two of these things at one time. I'll save one of those for a later review. Let's focus on the cube for now. As you can see, it's made by Kin Hank, which is the official company that makes all these Super Console X things. And it says that it supports all the way up through PSP, Nintendo 64, and Dreamcast. We'll test that here in a minute. But other than that, there's not much else to the box. It's amazing how dinged up these things get on their way from China. Inside the box, you're gonna find two wireless controllers. These are the same controllers that come with any of these Super Console X devices. They require AAA batteries and have their own USB dongle. You'll also find some instruction manuals. You don't really need those. Additionally, in the box, you're gonna get a remote control, which you really don't need because Android doesn't work very well, a power adapter, HDMI cable, and then the Super Console X Cube itself. Now, obviously this is called the Cube because it's reminiscent of the GameCube and not like any other device that's ever been released in history. This little black section here is actually just pieces of tape that they've put on here. As you can see, it got a little bit loose in the mail so it might be something you'll have to look at in the future. On the back, you can see it has a power button, which is a nice feature. Power adapter, ethernet port, HDMI, and AV out. Let's check what kind of SD card I got here. So it looks like they sent the 256 gigabyte one, the one with the most games. Yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty nice looking console. I always had issues with the original Super Console X, and design-wise, I like this one a lot better. It's kind of cute looking sitting here on my desk like this. Okay, let's actually get into the firmware and see what it's like. Like I mentioned before, this is running Emulec 3.9. And this is what the interface is gonna look like here in the beginning. It's very simple as you can see. If we go over to the all games section, you can see that it has 50,000 games loaded on here. Now you can also change out these themes if you don't like them, you just go into the theme section here. There's a few to choose from, but you can also go into the updates and download section and then download any other themes that you find there. This one here is my favorite, it's called Elec Full. And obviously there's a lot of choice here, so whatever floats your boat, this is just the one I like. Okay, let me speed through the systems here real quick, just so you get an idea of what's available on this device. In general, it's gonna be your typical home console and handheld systems, as well as arcade games and a smattering of old school PC or home consoles too. We'll start off easy with Nintendo games first. One of the things I really like about these Super Console X images is that they have these really nice bezels on the side to compensate for the fact that these are 4x3 systems playing on a 16x9 TV. I just think they're a nice little touch instead of having just black bars. And of course, if you don't mind the black bars, you can turn off the bezels in the settings. As expected, Nintendo and Super Nintendo gameplay is just fine. There's no problems here. Typically, what I'm looking for is a steady 60 frames per second, and these systems have it no problem. But what really surprised me is some of the harder to play NES games, for example Star Fox, played just fine with the default RetroArch core. And that's something that typically you're not able to do with the Super Console X. Usually you have to fiddle around with the different emulators that are available to find one that works. So that was my first indication that there's something up with the CPU here. So more on that later, but moving over to Sega Genesis here, you can see that the games run just as well on this too. And that's no big surprise because a lot of devices that have lower specs than this play these fine as well. 
And as much as I'd like to say that the SD card that came with this device is just all perfectly configured, it's not. There are a few things you're going to have to do to tweak. For example, with Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you're going to have to change the video scaling here to make sure it fills up the full screen. And that's fairly easy. You press Select and X to get into the RetroArch menu, and then back out into Settings, then Video, and then Scaling. And within here, change the aspect ratio from Custom to Core Provided. That's going to fix any scaling issues that you're having with those systems. So now you can play seminal games like Ants Racing just like that. And the 256 SD card has basically every game of these that you could ever expect, for example, Babe and Friends. Either way, that's how you set up Game Boy Color games so that they run at full screen. Now for regular Game Boy games, you can also go into the Options section and then change the colorization. You can change it to Internal, that's going to give you that greenish color that you remember from the original Game Boy. Or you can change it to something like the Super Game Boy too. There's all sorts of options here. You have hundreds of different color palettes that you can choose from. And in general, it's kind of weird to play these really small portable games on a big screen like this, but if it's something you want to do, you can definitely do it. Now, Game Boy Advance has the same scaling issue here, so you have to go into the settings and then change the scaling there to core provided, and then it's going to fill up the rest of the screen. It's a pretty easy fix. Now another thing you can do with something like Game Boy or any of the other systems is you can add shaders to them. This is going to alter the image so you can smooth out pixels and other things like that. Now the shaders that come preloaded on this device are not very complete, but it's pretty easy to add new ones. You just go into the main RetroArch menu, go into Online Updater, and then select Update Shaders. And you only have to do this one time, it's going to download a big shaders pack and install it onto your device. Now if you go back into the Game Boy Advance Quick menu and then go into Shaders and Load Shaders, you can find that new shaders folder, and within there you're going to have a ton of options. One of my favorites is called the Scale 2x shader. You're going to find it in the Scale NX folder. This one smooths out everything and gives it a bit of a watercolor feel to it. Of course, you can always just play it in the original pixelation, but sometimes it's fun to mess around with these too. Now let's move over to Nintendo DS. This one's kind of weird. You can turn on high resolution in the settings, but generally, with the Super Console X, you have to leave it at a frame skip of 4. But I found that if you lower it down to a frame skip of 2, it still works at 100% speed. Which is another indication to me that this chipset is a little bit more powerful than your typical Super Console X device. So that led me to think that I needed to do a little bit more investigating, which I'm going to do later in this video. Suffice to say that it does run pretty well. Even systems that have a hard time running on the original Super Console X, for example Virtual Boy, did just fine. Now in each of these videos, I typically like to grab one random system and just test them out. So in this one, I'm trying out the MSX console. And as you can see, the games here are playing just fine. And that's one of the neat things about these preloaded images, is the fact that it's going to have a bunch of games you've never played before. So you can see right here is probably the best version of Back to the Future I've ever seen in my life. When it comes to arcade, for the most part, they have a lot of the classics on here. So original side-scrollers like Golden Axe, or, or even old-school fighters like Mortal Kombat play just fine. And just a quick note here, the original Mortal Kombat actually played at 54 frames per second, so it's not actually showing any slowdown here. When it comes to fighting games, all of your typical, like, fighters that you would expect to play on this play just fine. So things like Marvel vs. Capcom, or even the CPS3 games like Street Fighter 3 play great. In general, if you want to play 90s style arcade games, they're going to play fine. But once you get into things like Tekken or Killer Instinct, this system's not going to be able to play them. Now, not every system is fully represented. For example, Sega CD only has two games available. But then if you go over to the PS1 section, you'll find that there are over 100 games here. And I think what happened here is they probably just prioritized PS1 games and then ran out of room so they didn't add Sega CD games. And I think that's fair. I think a lot of people like PS1 more than Sega CD. So, let's test out some PS1 games. And these games play at full speed, no problem. And on top of that, you can actually go in and upgrade the resolution. You go into the quick menu, and then into the options, and then change it to enhanced resolution, as well as the speed hack right underneath it. And that's going to double the resolution for 3D objects. But, as you can see here, it remains playing at 60 frames per second. So for the rest of the PS1 games you see in my testing here, I'm going to leave on that high resolution hack. And they play just fine. So if you're a big PS1 fan and you want to have a little bit of an upscaled resolution, this system's going to take care of that for you. Okay, moving on to other systems, there's a port section here which has various computer ports and other games. 
but it's not fully fleshed out. As you can see here, it actually doesn't have like the Diablo data file, so you can't play Diablo on this. But other games, for example, Prince of Persia, boot up just fine. So it's going to be kind of hit or miss. And if you really want to, you could just add the data files yourself if you go to the Emulec website and then check their instructions. Now, when it comes to PSP, there's a fair amount of games in here, but a lot of them are PSP mini games, which are these tiny little games. And some of the PSP games that are on here are some of the lower end ones, ones that are pretty easy to run. So they really curated this image to make sure they run at full speed. Unfortunately, that means that some of your favorite games from the PSP aren't even going to be loaded on this SD card. And I'll have a link in the video description to the full games list for all three of these SD card images, the 64, 128, and 256 gigabyte card. So that way you can cross-reference and see if your favorite game is already on the system. Okay, so now let's really get in the weeds about some performance testing. Let's see exactly what this thing can do. I'm going to start with Nintendo 64 here, running on the default core for this device. I'm going to use F-Zero to test, and as you can see here, by default it plays just fine, 60 frames per second. But the resolution is very low, it's 320 by 240. So we're going to go in here and we're going to change it to 640 by 480 which will give us a 480p picture. And basically to me, 480p is the bare minimum you should expect to play on Nintendo 64. Especially if you're playing on a TV and you don't want it to look like garbage. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that it does play at 480p at full speed. This is something that typically is not possible on the Super Console X, which is a really good sign. But unfortunately, by the time I got to the end of the race, the frames per second were dipping significantly. It was dropping all the way down to 47 frames per second. And then when I started up the next round, it was low again, dropping down to 44 and then maybe back up to 46, but still definitely not 60 frames per second. And I had a hunch here, so I went into the system settings and the information panel, and there you can see that the temperature of the CPU is 78 degrees Celsius. Now that's really hot. I would expect anything over 80 degrees to be somewhat dangerous to the CPU. So my expectation here is they're actually throttling performance to keep that temperature in check. So I let it cool down for a couple hours, and then I went and I checked it again. And as you can see, it's running at 44 degrees Celsius, at least when you first boot it up. And again, going into F-Zero with 480p right when I first boot the system up, no problems. I can finish the entire race at 60 frames per second. But then when I check the temperature, it's already climbed up to 60 degrees just in a few minutes of playing. So I wanted to try out some other systems and see how they performed before it got too hot. For example, you can see here with Dreamcast, Sonic Adventure 2 is playing at 60 frames per second. But again, this is only within a few minutes of turning on the device. I bet you if you played this game for an hour or so, it would definitely start slowing down. And of course, some Dreamcast games are just going to play slowly no matter what. Dead or Alive 2 is probably the best example I can give you, where you can see that it's not playing at full speed, regardless of temperature. And even then, after about another 10 minutes of Dreamcast, you can see that the temperature here is now 73 degrees. So it's definitely climbing as I'm playing these games. That being said, I played Ocarina of Time for a good 20 minutes, and I didn't see any big changes in temperature or performance at all. Which leads me to think that it's really going to be those really intensive games, mostly racing games, things like that, which are going to have to have throttling on the clock speed if you play them for more than a few minutes. When I started playing something like Cruising USA, I was again seeing a lot of performance issues. And sure enough, when I went and I checked the temperature of the CPU, you can see it's at 77 degrees Celsius. Now my buddy Wicked Gamer, he actually tore down this console itself. And as you can see, it has a very cheap looking and probably ineffective heatsink. So it's possible that you can improve performance if you added a better heatsink here. But in general, I would just say that the thermals of this device are definitely keeping it from having its full potential. Now if you take out the SD card and you turn the device back on, it's going to boot into the Android interface. But unfortunately, this is not a very good Android image. This is running at an Android 4, and the settings are actually still set to Chinese, and there's no real apps that you can use on this. So I would just say, don't even worry about the Android side of the device, and just treat it exclusively like an Emulec box. Okay, one last test here. I want to see how Chicken likes it. She hasn't been in a video for a while, so I wanted to give her some screen time. And it appears that she's not really into it. But it's all good. She doesn't play video games. She's a cat. All right, everyone, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show off some of the differences between the Super Console X Cube and some of the previous Super Console X devices that have been available. I think given the fact that this is a $50 to $75 device, depending on the size of SD card that you get, it's still of moderate value. 
given the fact that it comes preloaded with a bunch of games, and if you're one of those people that really can't be bothered with setting all that stuff up yourself, this might be a good option. Of course, if you don't mind tinkering and you wanted to kind of figure this stuff out on your own, then I would recommend going and finding your own Android TV box and loading up Emulac -like yourself. You can save a lot of money that way. Now, if you're really looking for better performance, you're going to pay for it. And this is one example here, the Super Console X King. This thing costs about $200, but it's going to run things like Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast no problem. And I've already done a video on this, so check that one out if you'd like. And also here in the middle, there's another console here, which I haven't had a chance to review yet, but it'll be coming here soon. And this is the Super Console X Max. This one costs about $125 and also has some improved performance. But if you'd rather stick with the cheapest device you can find that's preloaded with a bunch of games, I would say the Super Console X Cube is one of your best bets. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.